Hey everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and then in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. Now as always if you don't want to watch the entire video you can just skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any information for Enchanters, Darkest Dungeon the board game, or Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 but let's get to the rest. For Joan of Arc today, some of you asked about the PDF versions of the upgrade pack. Then Marco and I brought it to the team and the answer we got was that we were going to wait until fulfillment began. However, after further discussion, we decided that we can release it to you now that the files have gone to print. So without further ado, you'll find the links to the 1.5 rulebook, the updated cards, and the scenario collection book in the description below for both the English and the French languages. We're also currently working on a miniatures guide for you as promised. We have the Excel file ready along with all the assets and the template we need to prepare the guide as this is an asset that you will need when you actually have the game. We'll make sure that you get it closer to fulfillment. Now we'll come back to you soon with an update on production and an idea of what the immediate future holds for the project. So we thank you all for your support and your patience. For Solomon King today, we just wanted to give you a brief update on production, and that is Wave 2 has gone to production along with the Wave 1 errata files. And we're also currently expecting the digital proofs from the factory, which we will have to check and approve before mass production begins. After mass production begins, we will be able to provide you with a clearer view of the timeline needed to complete and fulfill this last leg of the project. Furthermore, when the digital proofs of the errata are approved, we'll make sure to provide a new link for you all to use in the meantime. For Reichbusters today, we've been seeing some of our Asian backers asking about where their errata packs are for Reichbusters. So we've just got word that VFI Asia has received the product and that shipping should begin next week. So we want to thank you so much for your support and patience and we certainly hope that your errata packs will be with you shortly. If you have any further questions or concerns, please feel free to contact our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net and they should be able to assist you in whatever capacity you need. For Steam Watchers today, we have a short update on the shipping timeline for the boats carrying the product to the hubs. We have two 40-foot containers on the APL Merlion V.OFM7DW1MA. Can I just say that I hate ship names? Let's continue. They are headed for Europe, which departed on June 12th and is scheduled to reach port in Rotterdam on July 18th. We also have two containers, a 20-foot and a 40-foot, on the APL Columbus OGX17E1MA headed for North America, which is scheduled to depart on July 3rd and is expected to arrive on, in Oakland on July 26th. Headed to our Australian and New Zealand backers, we have the NYK Diana V.097S, which is scheduled to depart on July 2nd and is expected to reach port on July 30th. En route to our backers in the UK, we have the HMM Dayon V.001W, which is scheduled to depart on June 28th with an estimated arrival at port in Felixstowe on August 1st. And finally, VFI Asia reportedly picked up the product from the factory on June 18th, and it should have reached the hub yesterday, June 21st. Thank you all for your support and patience. We'll continue to update you on shipping as more information becomes available. For Hell the Last Saga today, while playtesting continues and translation work begins, we'd like to give you an overview of how we're redesigning the environment of Hell while waiting for the progress board to be updated. For those of you who were able to test the prototype on Tabletop Simulator, you may remember that the properties of each zone were global. During development, though, this choice proved insufficient to offer tactical variety in the long run. For example, rock zones were initially considered as obstacles, but now we deal with movement and line of sight restrictions on each side of the hexagon that defines a zone. 
The absence of a marking on one side means that the zone is accessible. In other words, a miniature can move there and that the line of sight in case of a ranged attack can enter or leave it. An obstacle marking indicates that the zone is not accessible and that line of sight stops in this zone, meaning that it can be targeted but not crossed. A hindrance marking indicates that the zone is accessible but that line of sight stops in the zone. In interior or underground areas such as caverns, we can use the positioning and presence or absence of these markings to really define the accessibility and line of sight relationships between areas which may be physically adjacent, but not necessarily so in terms of movement. But that's about it for an update on how things are progressing in gameplay development. So we'll see you next time. Finally, today is the day for the launch of the Kickstarter campaign of Six Siege, the board game, which is at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go check it out. It will only be a 10-day campaign, so make sure that you tune in and check it out sooner rather than later. We've provided a lot of video content for you to peruse on our YouTube channel to hopefully aid you in your decision, but Quackalope, the King of Average, and Board Game Co. have also put up a few videos for you to check out, and Becca Scott has made a how-to-play video for it too. We'll have a lot of neat daily unlocks as well as some interactive polls throughout the course of the campaign, and I'm sure this will be uh, a popular project for everyone. So we hope to see you there. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Paris time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what he might spoil. This week, however, he'll probably be focused primarily on Six Seeds, the board game, as we will have our campaign running, but it still should be a fun time. But that's it for this week. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.